it is known that, as you sow, so shall you reap. The urge to know more about this universe and prove what we already know never ends. To fulfill this urge, to date, many science experiments have been done from ground-based to space, each better than its predecessor. Scientists have spent decades and multi-billions of dollars on a project that is going to unravel the hidden mysteries of this universe that no other science art could reveal. It is the iconic masterpiece, the James Webb Space Telescope, that is going to revolutionize astronomy. Among many others of its goals, the James Webb is going to answer one of the most bizarre theories, the Stephen Hawking Dark Matter Theory. Welcome to Techland. Join us as we unravel how the masterpiece in space is going to answer our mystery. When James Webb reached its new home in space, many scientists around the world began working on what they could solve using this gigantic observatory. Of these, the launch of the James Webb telescope may provide the data needed to evaluate one of Stephen Hawking's most contentious theories. That dark matter is made up of black holes formed in the Big Bang's early moments. To understand the theory, first we need to understand the dark matter. Physicists coined the term dark matter to describe a particularly perplexing phenomenon, a hypothetical substance that makes up roughly 85% of the universe. Because it does not reflect light, this enigmatic substance is invisible and has never been directly observed by scientists. So how do scientists know it exists if it is invisible? Astronomers know it exists because of its gravitational effects on known matter. Everything in the universe moves, orbits, and rotates as if there is more mass in the universe than we can see. Dark matter has a variety of explanations ranging from ghostly particles known as neutrinos to unknown particles and new physics laws. The substance is thought to be the gravitational glue that connects galaxies. Calculations show that many galaxies would be torn apart instead of rotating if they weren't held together by a large amount of dark matter. The European Space Agency says, shine a torch in a completely dark room and you will see only what the torch illuminates. That doesn't mean that the room around you does not exist. Similarly, we know dark matter exists but have never observed it directly. Many theories about the nature and origin of dark matter have been proposed by physicists. The most popular theory for a long time was that it was made up of a hypothetical weakly interacting massive particle, or WIMPs. However, these particles have yet to be discovered in any Earth-based experiment, prompting scientists to consider other possibilities. The observable signatures of primordial black holes, hypothetical black holes that existed soon after the Big Bang, are strikingly similar to those of WIMP-based dark matter, which was proposed as a candidate for dark matter by Stephen Hawking in 1971. So it was in the 1970s when Stephen Hawking and his PhD student Bernard Carr proposed that primordial black holes could be the elusive dark matter. They proposed that during the first moments after the Big Bang, 13.8 billion years ago, lumpy regions with extra mass formed in the universe and eventually turned into black holes, each about the size of a proton. These tiny ancient black holes would be difficult to see but would have a strong gravitational pull on other objects, which is one of dark matter's two known properties. It's tempting to believe that this enigmatic stuff is caused by black holes. Because black holes are notoriously dark, filling a galaxy with them would theoretically explain all of the dark matter observations. Unfortunately, black holes are formed when massive stars die, so making black holes requires many stars, which requires a bunch of normal matter. Scientists know how much normal matter there is in the universe, and there isn't enough of it to account for all of the dark matter discovered by astronomers. Hawking and Carr, on the other hand, were not well received by the scientific community, but a new study suggests that Hawking may have been correct with a few tweaks. Three astronomers have now developed a theory that not only explains the existence of dark matter, 
but also the appearance of the universe's largest black holes. A team of astronomers from Yale and the European Space Agency, or ESA, led by Nico Capaluti of the University of Miami, tweaked the famous scientist proposal and came up with a new model for how the early universe might have formed. The researchers looked at dark matter models made up of primordial black holes with masses ranging from a few hundred million to hundreds of millions of solar masses. According to the new model, the first stars and galaxies could have formed around black holes, which could grow into supermassive black holes by feasting on nearby gas and stars or merging with other black holes. Yale professor of astronomy and physics Priyamvada Natajaran, the paper's theorist, said, If most of the primordial black holes were born at a size roughly 1.4 times the mass of Earth's sun, they could potentially account for all dark matter. Primordial black holes, if they do exist, could well be the seeds from which all supermassive black holes form, including the one at the center of the Milky Way. According to researchers, dark matter clusters more actively in their model than in theories where dark matter is made up of black holes with narrow mass ranges. This alleviates the constraints imposed by previous observations and computer simulations. Natajaran further explained that what excites her about this concept is how it elegantly unifies and resolves two of the most difficult problems she is working on in one failed swoop, first being probing the nature of dark matter, and the other, the formation and growth of black holes. Now, Natajaran, Nico Capaluti, and Gunther Hassinger of the European Space Agency have discovered that primordial black holes could play a key role in the universe by searching for the first stars, galaxies, and supermassive black holes, or SMBHs. They also stated that their findings suggest that stars, galaxies, and SMBHs appear very quickly in cosmological history perhaps too quickly to be explained by the current universe's formation and growth processes. While this is still a concept, scientists believe it could be tested in the near future with the iconic James Webb Space Telescope. According to them, the James Webb was created specifically to answer questions about the origin of stars and galaxies. The James Webb Telescope's mission will be to find the first galaxies that formed in the early universe and see stars forming planetary systems. Astronomer Gunther Hassinger of the European Space Agency said, If the first stars and galaxies already formed in the so-called Dark Ages, Webb should be able to see evidence of them. James Webb should make surprising discoveries and aid humanity's understanding of the universe's origin and our place within it. One of the goals is to look back 13.8 billion years in time to see the first stars and galaxies that formed a few hundred million years after the Big Bang. The telescope will primarily study the universe in the infrared, whereas Hubble has studied it primarily at optical and ultraviolet wavelengths since its launch in 1990. Webb has a much larger light-collecting area than Hubble, allowing it to look at greater distances and thus further back in time. According to physicists, future observations with the James Webb Space Telescope, Athena in Usulid, and the Earth-based Square Kilometer Array will put their theory to the test. The new dark matter model predicts significantly more black hole mergers in the early universe which could be detected during future Laser Inferometer Gravitational Wave Observatory or LIGO runs or planning Laser Inferometer Space Antenna LISA experiments. LISA will be able to detect gravitational wave signals from primordial black hole mergers. Unravel the mystery of primordial black holes and scientists will be able to solve another cosmic puzzle the large amount of radiation detected from distant, dim sources scattered throughout the universe. The researchers said growing primordial black holes would present exactly the same radiation signature. The model also predicts the birth of supermassive black holes almost immediately after the Big Bang. These objects have been seen since the beginning of time, 
Their existence, however, contradicts the standard cosmological model, which predicts that the first black holes arose from massive stars that had to consume matter for billions of years to become supermassive. The new theory also explains how black hole pairs with a total mass of more than 100 solar masses exist. Andrew Feldman of Advanced Science News writes that the astrophysical model of binary stars forbids their formation, but the Laser Inferometer Gravitational Wave Observatory, or LIGO, and the Virgo Gravitational Wave Inferometer have observed their merging into larger black holes. According to researchers, these could be primordial black holes formed during the early universe's peon formation stage. Just like that, there is much more that scientists are sure going to be resolved by the James Webb. What do you think? Are we finally going to understand dark matter? Let us know in the comments.